So we've been seeing these amazing images and graphics of the Mars rover and the travel to Mars. It's so far has seen only spacecraft making that trip, but there are plans for humans to start making that trip as well. And when that happens, there's much to learn about, for example, how deep space travel might affect those whose health is going to be in place as they go to Mars. And what are other travelers to other planets, for example? Somebody's going to have to worry about how to take care of those folks. So Dr. Emmanuel Aketa is ahead of that front, and he is here. He works as a scientist at NASA's Translational Research Institute for Space Health. That's a mouthful. He's also assistant professor in the Department of Emergency Manage Medicine and Center for Space Medicine at Beirut College of Medicine. Dr. Aketa, good morning. Good to see you. Thank you, Kamrel, for having me. This is an amazing topic. How did you get involved in that. I'm sure that as you were thinking about medical school, you didn't maybe say, I want to study space travel. Yeah, well, uh, since I was a, um, a kid, I wanted to be a pilot. Okay. Uh, then, you know, 9-11 happened and I, you know, there was a, a, an issue with, with pilots and going to that school. So I decided to go to medical school, which was a 180 degree from what I was doing originally. And then, you know, the, the path started to moving uh, towards where I am today and I am uh, absolutely honored to, to work in this area. So talk about what kind of unique things you look for as you study for deep space travel? I mean, how do you prepare for that ultimate? Yeah, I mean, deep space travel in general is very, very challenging. And I think uh, you, 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 you made a very, very good point with um, how, how difficult it is, specifically to Mars and, and beyond. And we have plans to go to the moon uh, in the 2030s, going back to the moon. And that is going to be a test ground to develop and test new technology so that we can then go, go to Mars. So let me just uh, mention briefly some of the, the, the most important challenges for mission to Mars. The first one is radiation. Mm -hmm. We have to ensure that the astronauts do not uh, get a high exposure of radiation. And that radiation in space is very difficult to shield. It's very different radiation than the one on Earth. Number two is the distance from Earth. The, the distance between the Earth and Mars is, is absolutely um, huge. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no real-time communications and there is about 40 minutes of time delay communications. So if you have a medical emergency, if you have a medical scenario where you need to call someone that's in Houston, right, mm -hmm. you cannot do it because it's going to take 40 minutes to, 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 get, the, to, to get a two-way communication. Right. So we need to develop Technologies that will allow the astronauts to, to provide healthcare to themselves without having uh, real time communications. So, do you also try to make sure that, for example, some of those first folks that go, that maybe somebody, maybe a medical doctor is among them just for. Just in case? Yeah, so the, f the first mission that will go to Mars is going to be a four crew, four crew members mission. And very likely one of them is going be, to be a physician. But most people think that, you know, if you have a physician on board, everything is going to be fine. But that physician could also get sick, right? And then the other three crew members would need to take care of that physician. So we need to make sure that the four of them have the same technologies, the same resources, and the same training and capability so that they can, care, they can take care of themselves regardless if the physician gets sick. You said radiation is one of the issues. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Radiation in space is altogether different than what we experience yeah. here. What kind of sicknesses can come about as a result of the radiation? I know that here we think about cancers, yeah. mm -hmm. but for a trip to Mars it may not be long enough to develop cancer, but it could develop something else. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so this radiation, what makes a difference is that it, it is very high energy radiation. It comes from the stars, from the supernovas, and from the, from the, from the Big Bang, from the creation of the universe. So this this radiation is very, very difficult to shield, but it's low dose radiation. Mm -hmm. So we are um, concerned about two main uh, parts of the human body. The first one is the central nervous system, and the second one is the cardiovascular system. So those two systems are the ones that will likely get mostly affected by radiation. This whole process is amazing to me um, as we think about what's going on. I remember as a kid, we watched TV. Tang was one of mm -hmm. those things that they said was developed because of NASA. Right, all right, that right, kind right, of stuff. right. Yeah. What kinds of things are you looking at now that may be something that will influence things that we are using now that what you're studying? Yeah, ab absolutely everything. This is this is a great question because most people think that you know everything we will develop for space is only for space, doesn't have terrestrial applications. But every single thing that we develop for space has a lot of applications for Earth, and specifically in the in the medical health in the in the healthcare uh, arena. And if you think about the challenges for Mars and the isolation for a trip to Mars, it is very similar to some communities here on Earth that are, uh, don't have access, readily access to, to healthcare, right? They're isolated. They cannot have a physician with them. They have to maybe, maybe go, go very far away to do this. So all of these technologies that we're developing, uh, both for, for, the, for the medical care and also for um, other general areas like how, how do we um, 
uh, remove the CO2 from the spacecraft and these type of things. How, we ca how can we produce medications in real time? How can we enhance the, the, um, the nutrients from the food? All of these things have 100% applications for terrestrial uh, uses. You know, I'm going back to something. I may get in trouble, I may go over my time, but isolation would seem to be a big issue that Absolutely. you're concerned about. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I, we all have been experiencing this with, with COVID, right. and isolation confinement is one of the other really, really big areas for, for space, specifically for Mars. So imagine it's going to be a very small space it's going to be four crew members there. Uh, there's going to be likely no windows because windows do not shield radiation very well. Uh, you cannot just open the door and, you know, leave and, and vent to your problems if, if you have an issue with another crew member. So, um, you know, they, they, they will likely have some, some uh, behavioral issues, uh, maybe anxiety, depression, this type of thing. So we're also developing uh, technologies from the behavioral uh, arena so that we can provide them with the tools so they can cope with those very, very unique aspects. So how soon do we think we're going to be flying uh, people to Mars? Any guesses? At yeah, I would say the 2040s for, for, for Mars. Uh, to, the, to the moon, uh, it's it's 2030s, and, and that is the, um, um, the proving ground for the technology so that then we can, we can go to Mars yeah, safely. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be around for that. I may not make it. But <laughs> I hope to be. I hope to be. I want to see what you're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Keta, thank you for what you're doing. Good luck in the weeks and months ahead. Congratulations. Thank it's you for having me. It's a great project, and it's good to have you on board for that. Thank